In order to find the volume of this three-dimensional figure, what we've done first is we've plotted the four given points. Now, this is not plotted to any scale. This is just to give us some visual sense of what's going on. And so, for example, we've plotted points P, Q, R, and S, and those coordinates are listed above. And what we've done is we've created three vectors. You can look carefully here, and we have a vector drawn from point P to point Q. And we're just going to call that vector vector A, and we'll find that in just a moment. We've drawn another vector from point P to point R. We're going to call that vector C. And then we've drawn a third vector from point P to point S, and we're going to call that vector B. And again, we would wish to find a representation of those three vectors before we can actually find the volume. So let's take a look at how we could do that. So first we will represent vector A. And again, if you look at the figure, that is formed by joining point P to point Q. So you're looking at these two points right here. And of course, to come up with the vector representation, you take the terminal point, which is Q, and you subtract the initial point, which is P. So for example, look at Q, you take the X coordinate, which was two, and then subtract the X coordinate of P. You're always subtracting the terminal point by the initial point. We do the same with the Y coordinates. We have three minus one, and then for the Z coordinates, we have two minus zero. We close that off and then we simplify this, and we can see that vector A will equal four, two, two. So we're gonna circle that, we're gonna come back to it shortly, but now we need a vector representation of vector B. And if you look at the diagram, vector B is formed by joining point P to point S. Now, once again, we're going to subtract the terminal point, which is S, by the initial point, which is P. So we'll start out with the X coordinates. This is for vector B. So we would have three minus negative two, that's three plus two. Then we have six minus one, and then we have one minus zero. When we simplify this for vector B, we will get five, five, one. So that's great. We're gonna put a box around that. And now we need to take a look at vector C. Vector C is formed by joining points P to point R. So let's calculate vector C. So we'll take the terminal point and subtract the initial point. So we'll start with R and then we have one minus negative two or one plus two for the X coordinates. And then we have four minus one for the Y and then negative one minus zero. We'll go ahead and simplify this. We can see vector C is equal to three, three and negative one. Let's just summarize all three of the vectors right now. So there are the three vectors, and the reason we labeled them A, B, and C is so that we could follow the formula shown in the red box here. We're gonna find the volume of this three-dimensional figure, and if you look at the formula carefully, you look inside the parentheses, which we have to compute first, and we need to do the cross product between vectors B and C. So you'd have to do that cross product first. Let's go ahead and set up that cross product with vectors B and C. So here is the setup for the cross product. Do not be intimidated. What we have done is we have taken the X, Y, and Z components of vector B and we've run them across this row here. And then we did the same with the X, Y, Z components of vector C right there. And now when you do your cross product, what I like to do at least is to set up what I call the cross product template. So we're gonna have a little position here for the I hat or X direction. Then we're gonna have a minus sign here. Always put a minus sign. That will precede this slot here. That's gonna be the J or also known as the Y direction. And then we have plus another slot here for the K direction, which is also known as the Z direction. Now to compute this first space here, what I like to do is just encase this in brackets and then I cover up the first column. So I cover up the I column, and then I just have a two by two, and it's actually a two by two determinant. So that just means we have to cross multiply this way. So five times negative one is negative five, and then three times one is three, and then we just subtract those results, nice and easy. Next, we cover up the J column, and again, that leaves us with a two by two determinant. We'll have five times negative one, negative five, and then we have three times positive one, which is three. And then we subtract that result as well. Notice we put brackets around that again. And then for the K direction, we're gonna go over here and just cover up the K column. And then we're going to multiply five by three, which is 15. And then three by five, which is also 15. 
So we'll subtract those and we'll end up getting zero. So the cross product we can summarize here, B cross C will equal, okay, negative five minus three is negative eight, I, negative five minus three is negative eight, but then there's that extra negative there, so that'll be plus eight J and then plus zero K. My personal preference when doing the cross product is to write the answer in this form using these sort of triangular brackets. So we have negative eight, eight, and zero. So that's great, that's the cross product. But if you go back and look at the formula for the volume of this figure, the next thing we would have to do is take vector A and dot it with the cross product. So we're looking right there. We're gonna set that up right now. Take vector A and then we're going to dot it with that cross product. So you would write it as follows. And then this whole thing is going to be in an absolute value. So let's set that up right now. There we have it, just kind of pause, make sure this makes sense. Vector A was this vector right here. And then the cross product we had obtained earlier is this vector right here. And we're doing a dot product now, not a cross product. And this is actually much, much easier because to do a dot product, all we do is take the product of the X components of our two vectors and then add that to the product of the Y components of the two vectors. And then finally add that to the product of the Z component of the two vectors. And then we encase that in the absolute value. And now we just simplify and we'll have the answer. So here we have negative 32 plus 16 plus zero. If we simplify inside, we're gonna have the absolute value of negative 16, which of course is equal to positive 16. So positive 16 cubic units would be the correct answer for the volume of this three dimensional figure. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. Please do not feel obligated to do so.